Hi, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about using SXA and Unicorn serialization uh, in your projects. Um, in my blog post, I, I speak a little bit about how I have this set up, but it also feels like it's a complicated enough topic that I could make a little video about it. Uh, but there's quite a bit of detail in the, in the article already. Uh, what I want to show first was um, my project structure. And essentially what I have here is uh, a website project foundation and feature folders. Uh, the project foundation feature, um, they adhere to the Helix design principles. And I, and I thought I would add a website one because I felt like there was these configurations that uh, were floating around and I needed a place to put them. Uh, so let me, let me walk you through a little bit how I have that configure. So I have, I have a company website project and this one's going to contain configurations that are uh, unique to the instance of Sitecore. And with SXA, uh, there are going to be kind of shared across all of your projects, all of your different websites. Uh, there's going to be shared uh, root, root items. And so what I did was under website, I created a company, uh, company serialization configuration. And effectively, what this uh, what this offers is a way to capture all of those root nodes that belong into the tree. Um, and so there's it's kind of hard to see in this because it's just you know XML file. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like in the Sitecore tree. So imagine uh, you've installed SXA. Now it's time to create um, a, a new website for your company. Uh, or maybe you're going to create a couple different websites. So the approach that I've taken is uh, the tenant folder in SXA uh, is the company. So in the example that I have, I have company is, is the kind of the, okay, company is the company name. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, to say that. And so I've, I've got, in this case, Concentra shared throughout the, um, through the items. So feature has a Concentra, foundation has one, uh, project has one. Now, if you've not worked with SXA, um, the, the nice part is that when you create uh, a new tenant, uh, you can create a tenant folder, and then inside the tenant folder, create new tenants. So I'm using the tenant folder as the company, and the tenant is the, the website that I'm going to be hosting. Uh, there's another interesting thing is with SXA, uh, you have the you have the concept of tenants and then you have sites. So uh, I will focus really just on the um, uh, the company and the tenant, and then the site just sort of automatically follows. Um, I didn't really see a need uh, in our project to have a like a a site for every state in the United States. We just have. A national website so to me dot com is the national website uh, and then internet is our internet portal and I could see having other tenants in here that have to do with other smaller sites and the beauty behind it is that the tenant folder uh, wraps together the whole company um, we uh, we do have plans to have other companies Hosted on our same instance of Sitecore, so I'm I'm trying to future-proof that, if you will. So under content, uh, we have the company. Under templates, uh, the company will appear under the uh, the Helix folders, if you will, the feature foundation and project. Now, when you create a new new tenant uh, within SXA, uh, it will create the folder structure for you under the project. Uh, data templates so that that was sort of automatically for him so uh, how do I propose that you get started well first create a new instance of site cores install SPE install SXA start creating your site uh, that will help you figure out just what the names are going to be called uh, and, and and other things I'd hate for you to have a project in Visual Studio all set up and then all the names have to change so once you you've got that planned out the information architecture planned out um, and in my case, I know that I'm going to have a dot .com and intranet, uh, then the only time that that will show up is when it's under project. Uh, you won't have a, a, any project specific or any tenant names appear under feature foundation. And I think that's the case because 
the feature actually should be specific to your company, uh, not to all the sites that you're hosting. Um, and so it should be a fairly generic kind of thing. Um, under system, there's also uh, the, uh, the three folders. Uh, I know that there's one under settings. Uh, settings will have a feature project, uh, foundation and project. And so I went ahead and created it. So essentially what I did was I went through all of, um, all of these folders or all the different parts of the tree and I created uh, a, a company name folder. And when applicable, I created the tenant name folder. Uh, and I'm doing this in preparation for the serialization so that I, I know exactly what I would need. Uh, in, in my case, I, I had to go through several iterations of doing this because I didn't know what I was going to create. And it, it's just easier to go create everything up front, set up the serialization, and then in the future, you don't have to worry about if the node's there or not. You just start creating something underneath it and Unicorn will take care of it. Uh, so under system, there's uh, settings. Uh, there's also, um, I wanted to have uh, workflows captured the same way. So I'm treating uh, workflows as uh, where you could have a company name and then the, uh, the different tenants appear. Um, if you've got a better way to do it or if you've got re uh, recommendations for me, I'd, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, the same would go for the media library. Uh, feature, foundation, and project. Uh, in SXA, uh, this stuff is certainly automatically created, um, especially with the sites. And then this is where your themes would go, uh, right here. So I've got my standard theme. And so now that I've got that and I understand how this is being structured, uh, then let's go into the configurations. So under website, I showed you the company serialization config. So this is use, uh, has transparent sync disabled in Unicorn. And I have all of the, uh, the different locations that I walked you through. I have that company name um, shown in the config. Now, because I wanted to exclude the children, transparent sync doesn't work. It, it just, it, by design, that doesn't work. Um, but what I'm able to do is exclude all the children, and uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward to do that. So once you've created this configuration and you bring up the unicorn uh, serialization page, uh, there would be an entry f specifically for company.website. Now that you've got your website uh, uh, configuration, this will work for for the rest of your project. You don't have to come back to here and, and modify this particular config because you've already created it and when you serialize everything, it just works. Unless I figure out another place where I need to have this project foundation feature combination. But if you've already gone through everything and you've created it, then it's just a one-time setup. So uh, then we go to our project. Um, so I've got the company project.com and company project intranet and when you break these down uh, I needed to come up with uh, actually three configurations for this case uh, and let me just briefly explain why so in the development environment I want to serialize everything I want content everything under home everything under data uh, everything under presentation and settings uh, everything under the media library that's for this uh, for this tenant and so with transparent sync it's it's trivial I just set up an entry for each one of those folders and as you can see uh, this uh, configuration makes the assumption that the company exists already which we've already addressed that so all I have to do is have all of the tenants uh, represented so the internet will will be an identical script uh, sorry identical configuration the only thing that's different um, that one percent that's different is everywhere it says dot com is now internet um, and I believe with unicorn 4 uh, you'll be able to do some base abstract configuration uh, so that would probably simplify everything I'm trying to do now so moving forward um, I needed an INT configuration uh, because it is, it's after the development environment and I want to be able to duplicate uh, what all the other environments would look like. Now if you, if you go straight from dev to a test environment, um, this config is just ex extra. But we have a dev INT 
uh, test than production. So I needed one for INT, and, and I can explain that a little bit later, but it really has to do with when I run my build script, it looks for the, uh, the naming conventions of the configs. I'm doing this instead of slow cheetah. And then finally, the CM config. So INT and CM, they look identical. And let me walk you a little bit through that. So I've got transparent sync disabled. Uh, I've got um, most of these settings are identical. Uh, but where things needed to be different uh, is in the media library and content. Those are the two places where um, marketers go in and create something. Uh, so we've got under media, the media library. Um, I want to exclude all the children of the site USA except for the editing theme and standard theme. Uh, the reason why is because development is going to ma uh, manage that but all the other folders are, were not. So once again if we go look into the media library um, I want to track standard and editing theme but design images, downloads, feeds, placeholders that's all kind of volatile information marketers are going to manage that or you might have some scripts that generate data in the media library and so I don't want unicorn to bark at me whenever that's the case alright so uh, under content um, I have exclude everything under uh, exclude the home item and everything beneath it and then I have exclude the children of site data star and so this was pretty, I, I think this was clever. Uh, basically what I want to do is I want home not tracked at all. And then under data, I want to be able to uh, carry forward through deployments, data, accordions, carousels, insurance categories, and so forth, because I'm going to uh, change the insert options. I'm going to add new ones and all of that so I want to be able to track all of these I want unicorn to uh, allow me to deploy that uh, into the next environment but anything beneath it I want excluded and so if we look back again uh, exclude children of path USA data well in this example it excludes the the actual item and in this case it says um, exclude any of the grandchildren so it's anything that's uh, immediate descendant of data, you can get those, but not their children. So uh, I think this is a really great way to, to do that uh, for SXA because once again, I don't want to blow away uh, their content. I don't want to uh, mess up all the promos or the accordions that marketers are creating. And then, uh, so the internet will be identical to that and then finally for feature and foundation those are just uh, straightforward configurations um, show that so if I go to serialization you'll see that I've got transparent sync and all I care about in this case is templates and layout um, but once again it assumes that the company is already there and that forms is what I'm looking for so if I go to the unicorn page Um, if, if you have just set it up, uh, what you'll find is that uh, your company website config um, and, and I think maybe all of the other ones um, will not have the checkbox. And uh, let's just say another developer sets up their workstation, they build and deploy all the code, they, secret, um, they have all the serialized files in the right folder and then everything is disabled. Uh, what I found is that all I had to do was to uh, sync just the company website, which creates all of the root folders. So now Unicorn is completely aware of all of the root folders. Everything else is transparent sync. Then all the checkboxes appear. And if I also recall correctly, you don't have to sync anything else. Uh, so that worked really well for me. Uh, I hope you found this informative and uh, I hope to have a continuation to how I have my build set up. But if you've got any questions or recommendations, feel free to feel free to send those my way.